how do you see what are the new trends in 2019 or what are the new trends of 2019-20 that you see? Are there disruptions that you really see? And disruptions need not only come from fintechs or, or through technology. So, so what, what all do you see now? Let's start off with, uh, with your impressions. Maybe we'll go around like this, Kupal. See, uh, <clears throat> see, firstly, you know, the people have a basic tendency to avoid insurance, mm -hmm. <laughs> particularly in India. But I clearly see uh, the need for health insurance being felt in a very significant manner. When the basic context is one of avoiding, itself is a very major uh, trend. Because um, quite often people used to think that uh, I am quite healthy, nothing is going to happen to me. The moment uh, you get into a hospital and you have to pay 50,000, 60,000, 1 lakh, and this happens to your near and dear ones, and it happens quite uh, often. This has given rise to uh, increased awareness. And I clearly see this awareness not only in the metros, but also in the Tier 3, Tier 4 towns. Even there, uh, you know, when you say health insurance, people are immediately nodding their head. That itself is a very major trend. And it's good for the people and their protection and good for insurance companies. The second trend I am finding is uh, while the awareness is building up, also the need to take higher sum insured is also building up. What used to be difficult for selling 2 lakhs and 3 lakhs sum insured, now 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs is becoming very easy. So, uh, even for the affluent lot, 20-25 lakhs is becoming a lot more easier. So, the second trend is that it is not, one need not assume that one has to sell only 2 lakhs and 3 lakhs some insured. People are conscious that the healthcare costs are going up and therefore, uh, the need to take higher some insured is becoming the order of the day. It's not becoming very difficult to sell yep. higher some insured. So, very significant in fact. Uh, this is something very different from what we have been hearing the whole day, right? Insurance, people don't want to take it. But health insurance seems to be something which risk st stares people at the face now. Uh, so, so the rising cost of health care is probably helping the health insurance industry. So, yeah. so that's interesting. So let's uh, ask Mahesh. Mahesh, you're a relatively uh, newer player, uh, five years now? Four, yeah, almost four almost years. Almost four and a half years. So, and you've, you've doubled, obviously, larger part of the business is GI, but in health, what do you see and what would let you go and, you know, conquer the market? No, I think, uh, uh, let's, I'll dwell on partly two parts of the discussion. One is what we're doing at Kotak, what we see, and then what are the trends we see trends. globally, you know. Uh, Gopal alluded to awareness. In fact, uh, we talk about AI, blockchain, etc. There is an AI as well in insurance, what I would call the awareness and inertia problem, you know. It's not artificial intelligence because people have awareness issues, but people who are aware also there's a serious inertia, as Gopal said, because people think that I'm immune, as long as it doesn't hit my backyard, I'm okay, you know. So I think uh, uh, those two things need to be overcome significantly for us to uh, probably uh, have a tipping point in terms of uh, reaching out and increasing the penetration of insurance, you know. Uh, from our perspective, actually, we as a company probably at its infancy are about 30% health already. You know? And the idea is to push it to close to 40%. And that's largely coming on the backdrop of uh, being a bank-led uh, insurer, you know. In my limited experience of four and a half years of insurance and maybe about 10 years of liability banking, I've realized that health insurance is actually an advisory product. You know? It is not a product which can be consumed directly. You know? mm -hmm. uh, it requires some amount of intervention. Uh, it can be through the telephone, it can be through a physical intervention, because customers would like to understand the product better. Whereas motorists become increasingly commoditized, yeah. uh, I think health insurance requires serious counseling and effort, which is where we believe that uh, the role, the Advi advisory role that bankers play is clearly panning out for us, you know. So when an RM is able to speak to the customer, he's able to advise the customer. In fact, one of the things that we are propagating internally is that protection as, as a dialogue between customer and the individual. You have managed wealth management. It's always been asset allocation, returns, risk, right? It's never been about protection, you know. That's right. So I think the third dimension to financial advisory is actually protection because yeah. unless you're able to protect your assets, you cannot do much. 
Thankfully, globally, this is panning out. If you look at some of the global international models like Oscar uh, Insurance, which is a well-touted model in the last five years, I think that ability to do a lot of things through technology and through remote has been phenomenal. Um, I think they have been able to offer doctor on call. They do telemedicine. What they have really done is that they have taken the advisory role a further step forward in terms of integrating with the value chain yeah. of health delivery. Right? We must understand that we are only a part of the value chain. I come in to settle the claim. Right? right. There have been two kinds of interventions globally which has happened. One is wellness, which is a great discovery model which India is trying to embrace. Second is the intervention in terms of the health management itself. You know? And in India, you have companies like HealthyFi, you have companies like PureFit, yes. you've got companies which are manufacturing wearables and things like that. I think finally, the customer is looking for one total solution, holistic solution. You know? So we need to really integrate all this as insurers and people who manufacture these devices. Thankfully, the regulator has opened up the sandbox and I'm sure that Many of us have filed certain products and uh, uh, what you call solutions. So I think the, the customer is looking for solutions. The more and more, that's a trend I see. And globally, it's working. And when this current level of millennials reach 35, 40, I see a huge tipping point because they are used to consuming products through the web, through the mobile, uh, while the 45-year-olds are also embracing it. They are probably late adopters. The early adopters, when they start feeling the need for insurance, which will happen probably in about five years' time, I think there will be a huge tipping point in terms of how they consume insurance. Interesting, and I think we will come back to you as a continuation to the point of whole solutions because it has also an impact on the value it creates and the and the price of that. Uh, but yes, that this is probably already on us. It's palpable. The change is palpable. So moving on to Sridhar, uh, it's interesting that Mahesh said I used to be a wealth manager because as we move on to RSA, uh, Sridhar has you know over how long have you been there, Sridhar? Inception, too. Inception, right? So uh, <laughs> let me in. Let me get everyone into onto a little real secret, which even people who probably work very closely with me do not know. That when I used to be in Standard Chartered Bank in the year 1999, tied up as a corporate agent of RSA, yeah. and I was trained in and certified IRDS certification those days under RSA sponsorship. So <laughs> I, I passed the exam and and qualified to sell Sudaram non-life insurance and bank insurance, which was didn't have have a regulation. So the innovation that RSA brought in was the moment they came in, they had eight bank tie-ups, Citibank, Standard Chartered, you name it, they had the best banks because they went to the banks first. And there was a beautiful wraparound uh, created for customers. Yeah, absolutely. It sold very well. So these are disruptions. I mean, these are pre-technology, pre-app, pre-mobile disruptions. So Sridhar, what, how do you see the market? Yeah. I think year 2000, the disruption was cashless. We were the first company to offer cashless yes. service to for medical. That's right, you trained on that. But I think if uh, in <laughs> our experience is in 2015, when we launched uh, the Lifeline product, yes. which is a health indemnity product, we realized that the healthcare cost is going up substantially. And uh, the upper middle class, particularly the salaried class, yeah. uh, were really scared about the healthcare cost. So we said we will not launch a plain vanilla product. We said we will offer from 2 lakhs to 1.5 crores. We have three schemes, classic, supreme, and elite. But interestingly, we said such a high value cover cannot be given without doing medical underwriting. So we were very, very worried when we launched the scheme in 2015, whether the intermediaries, the end customer yep. will be, uh, will offer himself for medical examination. That's right. uh, so we, there were skeptics within the company, but we said we will pursue that because ultimately, the viability of the product will hinge on the quality of customers and the risk profile of the customers. Interestingly, this disruption has happened because uh, today we do around 5,000 medical underwriting every month, which is uh, tele-underwriting and some of them is PPMC where you undergo the medical test itself. And uh, today what we have really experienced as a disruption is customer says, look, I don't mind paying you the premium but give me a seamless, hassle-free service in the event of a claim. I would like to have a boarding pass, like I check into an aircraft, I want to check into a hospital if there is a, if there is a serious emergency. And I don't want hassle. People are not willing to wait for 48 hours, 24 hours. They want approval. They want approval on hand through a QR code. That is the kind of disruption we are seeing. So, interestingly, the medical underwriting that we introduced, today, uh, one third of the customers pass through the test, 
one third of the customers come with riders co-payment clause um, or loading yeah. and one third of them is rejected but what we have ex essentially seen is we will have less problems in the event of a claim because we have already done the medical underwriting this is a very very important and serious disruption in our business particularly in the health segment because here the regulatory environment has changed today we have to offer lifelong guaranteed renewal if you have to give lifelong guaranteed renewal you need to be able to reprice it uh, at right time and uh, repricing is not your own in your hands it's also linked to what the market market can absorb and therefore it is very important that we uh, this is a very important disruption and one other important uh, disruption is this service uh, the kind of service that you will have to offer at the time of uh, issuing a policy at the time of managing a claim is undergoing a sea change and uh, technology thanks to digital etc this is going to make a big change in terms of customer experience in the event of a claim uh, and of course i don't see ai and big data etc coming in a big way in terms of underwriting decisions for health business at the moment because you need database you need credible database you need multiple stakeholders to really contribute to the database before you can make a uh, you know proper decision out of that so that is bit far away but i think in terms of service in terms of coverage seamless delivery of uh, product etc there's a big change so oh, fantastic in fact the this is something which has been plaguing the industry because for the first 15 years of the industry be even life or health people have been not only customers who have been resisting going for a check up is the distribution distributions and distributors who is to also resist and sell under because it, the sort of a you know feeling or impression was that this is like a something which to be avoided because it slows down the sale but whereas it hastens the claim and in a claim intensive product like health i think it's a welcome change and great if if it you know pervades uh so sanjay who's the dominant player in employee benefits so there's a different view uh and what, so not just you know individual or distribution uh, but it's all about also packaging like, like mahesh said packaging lot of benefits together in employee benefits for which marsh is well known for so sanjay what do you see with all thousand plus corporates that you handle the your your own micro universe is a large universe by itself what trends do you see uh thanks jodeep uh, it's interesting to see a uh, conversation on health insurance in the same breath i think it, i'll take a pause and say that the health insurance business on a retail insurance is very different from the corporate business so we handle cross to 7 million lives touching 4000 corporates in india with a largest aggregation of uh, uh, group business and i think the insurance industry on the group health a significant part of the business is cashless and that has given a very different user experience as soon as the insurance is cashless so most of the insurance what the consumers experience is reimbursement and there the dissonance and the doubt is there many times in the minds of the customer whether i'll get my claim and the cashless is one big change in the group experience the second is the biggest dispute on the health insurance from a customer's perspective because that's what we do for living we represent the customer is around the pre existing disease which is there in the retail insurance it's not allowed and in the group it is allowed so as soon as you have the two components of pre existing disease allowed and you have cashless that goes through a very different experience from a consumer perspective let's look at india and we do a lot of we do every year annual survey of the entire corporate world in india and these are very very large surveys and we find in our survey that almost 95% of the corporates i'm talking about even including smes do have group health cover for their employees and there's no law there's a law for provident fund there's a law for gratuity in spite of an absence of law the value delivered by the insurance market on this space for the consumer is so high that it is so widely prevalent that we don't realize 
So that's something which is important to get some facts right, that it is very different from group versus this. In terms of the market trends, what is the few big things? I would say the copay on the claim where the individual user of the group has a skin in the game creates a very dis different responsible outcome. Though it has been talked about for last 10 years, but the total uptake as per our latest survey still is around 35 to 40%. I think that needs to go up. There has to be skin in the game for the insured, the ultimate insured, which creates a responsible consumerism in the health. Right. It's, it's yep. a win-win for all parties. So that's one very important, that trend needs to be pushed, which was in the low of 10%, 10 years back, and it has moved only to 35, 40%, but this needs to go up. That's one. A very rapid change which we have seen in the last two, three years, and is growing at a phenomenal pace, is the emergence of top-up insurance on critical illness in these group programs. That's a very interesting play that has come in a big way. And some of the things which are emerging, I would say more as new things, but not at a mass scale. We are seeing some of the buyers of these insurance are including <coughs> heavily discounted diagnostic programs as part of the health cover to create value. There's a lot of innovation happening on this whole space. HR partners are using these as uh, almost like an HR strategies on various aspects from mental health, from diversity, from inclusion. So there's a lot going on that whole space. And I'll not get to do all of this. I think the big trend which is of the future, which we need to watch out, and we have seen only around 25 corporates in such a large portfolio which have moved in, but I expect in the next couple of years, the largest corporates will move into this as a matter of economics and the compulsion is that the Indian market has been defined benefits. That is, all the employees get a cover of say 3 lakhs to 5 lakhs. That's moving into a defined contribution that the employees get an allocation of amount, which is 10,000 rupees to 15,000 depending on the seniority. And then the employees choose whether he wants to allocate for personal accident or life or health. I think that shift of creating choice, creating value and perception to the end consumer that's coming in the market. So the top 25 customers we have done in the last two, three years, but we see this demand is very rapid on the change from defined program to flexible benefits. So I think these are very interesting innovation for the market, for the consumer, and I can go on, but I think these are the big, big changes. And one observation which we don't talk about is, I remember 15 years back in conferences and 10 years back, there was almost an assumption that when you do an operation, with the insurance policy, is it more costly through yeah. insurance or is it without that? I would like to say that our data shows consistently that insurance is now cheaper than going direct to the hospital. And that is a game changer for the future of the market. Yeah. If insurance is considered to be a better negotiated price to access the hospitals, that will also change the consumer experience besides the cashless.